Okay, good afternoon to our next webinar today. We are going to talk about OpenE V7 uh, quick start. So we are going to talk about how to install, how to download uh, and which file to download, how to put the installation file on the disks or USB disk and how to install this on your uh, real server, how to install on your virtual server. Uh, we will also talk how to get maximum out of the virtual machine and we will show uh, very simple how to connect to NAS share uh, with Active Directory and how to connect to iSCSI target. So very simple tasks but we are also going to learn a lot of uh, details. So that's our agenda. We have uh, two main points, installing and simple setup. Okay, installing, as I mentioned, uh, there are two things, ISO or a zip image. Uh, both are almost the same. The zip uh, doesn't have uh, the boot uh, manager, which is uh, are needed when you will uh, start image as an ISO, so it, it is a bootable image. Where to find it? Of course you can go to our website, uh, you can go to products, open e v 7 and then you can click on download 60 day trial, okay, then you go to download site and then uh, you go to software download, right? So you can reach this uh, website from many different points. So as you see, we have a two download button. One, man, one button is for download ISO file. So here is ISO file and a zip file. Okay, I was downloading because there is a almost 400 mega so it takes few minutes to download so I was downloading these files to my uh, local PC already as you see that is the ISO um, that is the sorry zip file and that is ISO file so when I click on zip so I see what is inside the content the content of image uh, when I will have uh, when I will uncompress the ISO I can do it very easy uh, for example with 7-zip this is very practical uh, so I can unpack ISO same way as uh, unpacking zip so we could uh, actually have ISO only because ISO is all in one but we have zip because some people uh, will have problem to unpack ISO this is why we have a uh, both uh, versions available okay so w while waiting for unpacking it is un unpacking to this subdirectory okay it takes some time i can show you already w content of uh, of the zip directly okay because the uh, my total commander can uh, show the content of the zip without unpacking this so i have a build directory and I have a boot directory and I have a manual directory, right? And there is a one small control file. When I'm preparing a USB stick <coughs> in order to install the software on another machine, I need to, I need a small USB stick. Uh, we require two giga. I have already a, mm, actually 4 giga stick which I was uh, formatting here and I attached to my uh, notebook and I was copying already these two directories so the build directory the boot directory and this uh, control file that uh, is what is required uh, to run our software so in a uh, boot directory you will find the uh, boot inst and the boot inst you need to uh, right mouse click and select run as administrator uh, because Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8 uh, has a protection 
uh, to write to master boot record and only administrator uh, has uh, is allowed to do it uh, so even our program uh, want, wants to do it when you run not as administrator in windows 7 it will not work so we select a run as administrator uh, of course we, we remind here always and then uh, you just need to uh, confirm with enter and Oh, sorry, I was pressing uh, this twice. Now I was pressing without administrator one more time. So uh, right mouse click, run as administrator, and uh, press key. Now uh, you are just getting press any key to continue, and then you are leaving the DOS box. Okay, now the stick is bootable. Uh, but of course we cannot remove the stick uh, just any time we need to have a save remove so you will find the USB icon uh, on your right side at the bottom right side and the left mouse click then you will find option to safely remove the device Okay, so eject the, the device. So when you uh, eject, then uh, all the data are written already from the buffer uh, to the device, uh, USB disk physically, because Windows is keeping the data in the buffer, and after writing the data, it, it is uh, maybe, uh, it needs maybe one minute until the data are really physically written. Uh, there is one more program which I want to introduce to you. There is a program config when you start it. Here you don't need to run as administrator because here we will just uh, change the uh, controlling scripts. Our controlling scripts uh, here will control whether you will uh, run the installer and you will move the image to your server or uh, when we just uh, click on um, uh, R, so remove the uh, installer, uh, we will boot from USB media directly. So this that will be live boot. We do not recommend to boot a production server from, from USB media because USB uh, interface is known as an unstable. So if you need a very long uh, uptime, so maybe one or two years without reboot, please do not use a USB. If your server is not mission critical and uh, frequent reboot uh, doesn't matter, then you can run from the USB stick. But in, in the real production, uh, you know, mission uh, pr uh, critical production, uh, we uh, recommend to use uh, SATA DOM, IDE DOM, or maybe SSD disk. Uh, if there is no option for external uh, boot media, you can make 2 giga uh, logical volume on your RAID controller. So uh, the boot uh, volume, 2 giga, and the rest for your data. So when I click on R, then the uh, run software installer was uh, removed from the boot menu and when i start one more time maybe i want uh, reverse it so i click on d then the run software installer is set now as a default okay so uh, default is run software installer if you will not touch this config then it will run a software installer we have also tool like make ISO when you download uh, zip and you just need ISO maybe to put as a virtual machine and you have now uh, no more internet access or internet is very slow so you will uh, prefer to make ISO at once uh, over uh, waiting uh, for downloading uh, ISO from the internet okay that's the build when the build is uh, ready, you can go to your uh, server, go to the BIOS, select uh, a USB as a first disk in the boot sequence, 
and it will boot from the uh, USB stick. Then you can select uh, Run Installer and that it will move uh, image onto your uh, boot disk or boot media. We will show it exactly the same on the virtual uh, machine. So I, I have here another uh, server which has uh, installed I have a, another two servers so one is my Windows server here okay the console server that's my Windows server and on this Windows server I was installing Visper client and I have a uh, ASX installed machine so we will install here DSS as a virtual uh, machine so on this server uh, we install the ASX version 5 first and then we will install the DSS as a virtual machine the best practice is to have the ESX updated up to date so you go to help and uh, check for updates on the web and you click on this download patches then you need to select uh, SXI version 5 search oh VMware has some problem on the web okay now works so you will fi find a few files here very recently there is a new update for version 5 and that's enough to to download only this so you can click here and download this update uh, in the past you had a uh, few small updates and in the past you had to install the oldest uh, next one and the newest one so uh, it was a uh, three um, boot uh, required I will show you in my presentation probably I have removed this already uh, but as the last presentation I, I had to uh, three times uh, reboot my uh, six server now because they have a kind of service pack uh, it is enough when we download this one okay and uh, we will update our uh, six server I was updating my uh, six server already but I will show you how to do it because it is not so easy so we go to uh, console ASX I will load so that's my ASX uh, IP address on under data I put root if I put it empty I will need to enter my login name as root and we can open this already so because I was entering the, the root is already there done my password which I was setting during installing ASX and you see I have a S6 console uh, in order to get the console you need to go to the security profile and under properties and you need to make sure that S6 uh, I shell is running and SSH is running so by default it will be stopped so you need to uh, go to options you need to start and then select let's say start and stop or start and stop manually okay so here uh, same story it is already started you must have uh, both running so this SSH and SS, uh, SXI shell otherwise uh, this console tool will be not working the file I was downloading already and after download I was uh, copying into my data store so look I was booting 
my A6 with a SSD disk with a small 80 on 100 giga SSD disk. Okay, uh, this is a very good practice because you can boot SX from the local SSD, then you can put DSS in this data store here. And uh, the part of uh, this SSD disk you can use as a host cache. Okay, so host cache configuration, uh, properties. You need to select the disk, okay, data store. And you see, I was allocating already 20 gig space. I can remove this allocation, okay. So now you see the host cache space is uh, zero. And I can go one more time and say allocate, and then I can allocate, for example, forty gig this time. Okay. So now uh, forty gig is allocated as a host cache space. Okay. So uh, because we are going to use a hot uh, host cache. As, uh, as a SSD, so you need to buy a good quality SSD disk, right? It can be Intel uh, 3700, so Intel 3700, that's a very good, very reliable disk and uh, inexpensive in case of very high reliability, okay? Uh, I've forgotten if you will have a questions, just uh, type uh, the questions into the uh, chat window on the NetViewer and I will stop from to time and answer. Okay, so I will show you that when I go to browse data store, I was uh, downloading all these files, so uh, this file, this file and this file, so that's the three small updates uh, available from uh, VMware. And also I was uh, uh, downloading this latest kind of service pack, right? Now we are lucky because uh, we just need to use uh, this one and that's, uh, that we will be up to date. Uh, I was uh, mm, running all of them. So how to update this? Uh, I have notice on my presentation and uh, in this notice uh, we just go to uh, help check for updates as I was showing you download patches uh, select as uh, six I click on search and download in this time we upload uh, download just the uh, this the service pack of course the situation changed and later on you you may have some other file and you need to use this command uh, to to post this update, okay? So I will copy this command from my copy and paste, okay? So I can uh, copy this command, go to console okay so you you are um, posting this and after this you need to uh, reboot the server I don't need it because I was rebooting this already okay good that's the updating and after updating and rebooting your server uh, you are ready to install a DSS as a virtual machine so we can just click here add a new, a new virtual machine uh, let us select custom because in that we can also use typical but uh, there is few more questions when you select uh, custom and if you will select typical you will need to do it later on so the best is select custom let's say our dss will be dss uh, demo 
okay we will place our virtual machine in the, uh, this boot media data, data store okay on ssd that's okay it is a linux so we can select other uh, 2.6 linux 64 bit of course uh, that's default is enough for us a one giga may be okay but i will prefer as a minimum two giga and uh, now let's say uh, in order to show more because with two interfaces there are some more problems uh, than one interface i will select two interfaces for our dss and the mostly our dss uh, as a, it is a server machine it will have a minimum two interfaces we select this uh, vm uh, nick version 3 version 3 okay so that's the uh, para virtual uh, driver uh, that's the best driver for the uh, virtual machine because the regular driver is the e1000 is uh, quite slow okay uh, as a storage driver lsi uh, logic parallel is also very slow we can't use it uh, so you can use lsi logic sas or uh, we prefer VMware uh, Paravirtual driver. Okay. Uh, we will create a new disk. Yes, for DSS um, virtual machine, we will create a two giga uh, disk. Okay. So the default size is sixteen, of course, for this template. But we need two giga only. You can also select thin provision if you want to save space. Anyway, two gig is not a big deal, but uh, you can still some uh, have some savings okay that's it so our machine is defined already and now we need to attach our ISO file in order to install DSS on this template so I was showing you when I uh, go to my data store uh, under browse uh, you see I was uh, copying my ISO file here so copying ISO file here you just click on upload file and go to your download directory select your ISO file open and it will be uploading the file into your data store right so I have it already in my data store and this one is already fresh defined uh, a virtual machine with two giga disk uh, for DSS okay so let us uh, go to this um, virtual machine and we can click on right mouse click and edit settings or we can also edit settings here doesn't matter edit settings and now what is interesting for us uh, is a CD-ROM drive because uh, uh, ISO file will be virtually inserted into the CD, uh, CD DVD drive okay so uh, I select uh, location this is in the data store so browse double click on data store and that's my uh, DSS ISO image okay good and we just need to click on connect okay uh, that's it uh, the ISO is connected so when we start uh, then uh, we will be running installer by default okay so start as you see here the very first boot menu i can run memory test or i can just start my iso uh, image uh, build 7637 when you will be later updating then uh, and not deleting the previous version then you will see more lines here but uh, as a first time you see only one line because there is one um, image one build so okay i press enter it will be pressing enter automatically after a few seconds and now i have two options run software installer or uh, run the uh, image directly from the media in this case um, the default was run installer if i will not press on the arrow i will i will be running installer already 
uh, but you you know that you can uh, you can change this option very first time uh, when you are starting from the USB stick. Okay, so run software installer. Uh, this will just boot our DSS image and it will uh, copy the uh, the image onto uh, selected uh, boot media. So because in our virtual machine I was uh, in um, defining only one single two giga disk, so there will be not many, there will be only one option to select. So I will be just confirming this. Okay. We have the first question about the license. We just need to confirm. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the only one disk we see here, it's this two giga disk. So we cannot uh, have a selection because there is one disk only. Uh, maybe that will be more interesting if I will already have both uh, disks available. Maybe, maybe I will go to disagree and shut down. Okay. So my goal was here also to show it to you how to install uh, DSS as a virtual machine properly. So I told you uh, that uh, we were installing on the big server uh, ES6 first on SSD and the second disk is uh, second um, storage is a RAID controller here. So I will go to configuration and uh, storage adapters. I will go through this. So here there are just uh, SATA ports. So first is empty, second has our SSD disk. Here is empty port, empty port, empty port, empty port. And here we have a uh, SATA control unit, next one. And next one is mega rate SAS fusion controller. So, and we see here we have a, a disk. So that's the rate. That's the rate. And this rate controller has a capacity of as you see 19.6 also almost 20 terabyte and in order to control this uh, 20 terabyte storage unit we have two options first option is you can redirect this RAID controller to the DSS using advanced settings and go to configure pass through and then you see there is a LSI line here Mega write controller. I can select this and confirm this and uh, cl click OK. And then I will need to reboot my ASX server. And after reboot, I will uh, the ASX server will not be controlling this, but DSS will uh, uh, will be able to uh, control this uh, rate controller. Of course, under DSS, we will need to add the PCI device. I was showing this exactly last uh, on the last webinar uh, in the best practices webinar and then uh, when I was getting after a um, uh, reboot I was getting to the uh, edit settings and I was uh, clicking on add and here I was having a PCI device which is unavailable now. But after uh, you make a pass through, this, this PCI device exactly will be available. You will add it to this uh, machine, and when you will start, this DSS will see this as a, uh, you know, real uh, RAID controller, not a virtual. Okay, so that's the first option when we can go a pass through. And then I'm not going to go step by step with this today. Uh, there is a second option, a row disk. 
okay so we will not install the pass-through but we, we will want uh, when I go to storage adapters and then select this disk I want to configure this 20 terabyte um, array as a so-called raw disk and I will add this raw disk to our DSS okay so let us do it uh, because this is a local disk the only option to configure this as a raw disk is again our console uh, then uh, I have uh, in my presentation I have a next uh, command which is uh, looks like this similar to this okay we can copy go to Okay, something wrong. The the copying was not good. Let us copy this one more time. Okay, so Okay, copy but you know I need it. I have here one more thing. I have a help and then I have it as a one line. So I was using Notepad and then I can copy this sorry as a one single line okay so copy and uh, right mouse click that's my command okay so the command is VM uh, KFS tools so when I click only on this command Then we have option, the Z, Z, Z option is a create pass through disk. So we will create a pass through uh, disk only. Okay. So there is a uh, adapter here and this adapter we will use a exactly um, PV um, para virtual SCSI. Okay. So let me uh, enter the command one more time so I will copy this one more time and right mouse click so and here the, the copy is working not well because here is a dot I just need to put a minus before A then I need to put my device so this is uh, VMFS devices disks Okay, so when I when I have only this, I can click uh, double tap uh, D, double tap, and it is finding uh, everything was starting with D. So here I will need uh, uh, disks. So D E. Okay, next double tap. Uh, now it is showing me plenty of uh, devices, and now my question: which a device I should to select okay let us go to let us go to storage adapters and my array and when you see here there is a local disk and this disk has a signature NAA600 and so on so now I know that is exactly this uh, disk here okay so it is enough when I, in my command I just press N and then tap and it is completing the command uh, automatically for me. Okay, so now uh, I need to put a row VMDK or row or something else, uh, then the name is not so important. Uh, uh, the important is that has a VMDK extension. So I will again need to put this uh, disk exactly in the place when my virtual machine is so again I can I need a virtual machine I need a, my data store so I can click just on uh, V volumes and then uh, you see I have a data store so date okay that's enough I click tab and I have a data store and let, then let me click double click okay it is showing me all the files there and also I see DSS-demo that's my virtual machine 
I see it here, right? So that's my virtual machine. So let me press D, tap. Okay, that's the uh, my virtual machine directory, and row uh, vmdk or my row doesn't matter. You can put uh, any name dot vmdk, and then uh, this uh, last parameter is uh, showing which driver we are supposed to use. Okay, so a uh, para virtual SCSI enter. So what happened now? Uh, let ma let us list uh, VM FS okay volumes data store DSS. I will select all and I will select age for human. It will show the nice parameter, nice uh, size. So the size you see here I have a two lines uh, sorry I have uh, this line with VMDK that's uh, exactly 20 <coughs> terabyte my row disk and one more time okay these two lines that's my row disk created it is kind of uh, pointer and the disk in two files but uh, uh, another one is hidden so we will not see it okay we have created a raw disk file so now we need to attach the disk to our virtual machine <coughs> so in order to attach the disk to the virtual machine i go to the virtual machine <coughs> i click on edit settings and add of course And of course, we adding hard disks. So next, uh, and here is option create new virtual. But we have other already. This is why we select use existing. Next, then we can browse. This is in data store. This is in DSS directory, and this is my row, right? So we select this 20 terabyte disk. Okay. Next, next, and next, and the disk is already selected so now when i go to edit settings my virtual machine has a one two giga disk for my, to boot my dss and uh, 20 giga disk to put the data which will be controlled by dss okay so let us run the installer one more time so now we will see a bit more Okay, installing the DSS now will be a bit more interesting. So run installer. When we'll be selecting the disks, then, then we're supposed to see both a 2 giga and 20 terabyte. By meantime, when I'm running boot, uh, there is a question already. I want to replace, replicate and test what you are doing here. Uh, we will get the slide deck with the commands at the end of the presentation. Okay, these uh, commands uh, I can, of course, uh, copy and paste to you now. So, of course, these old commands you don't need to do now. Uh, but just in case when you will see uh, in soon a kind of small update then also you will know how to install so I can just copy it and paste it in the chat so you can note at once okay so you should have it just copy and paste to your notices anyway uh, the webinar is recorded so will be available on the web soon Uh, good, so we have the uh, license already, enter, and look what happened here, and now we have a 2 giga disk and we, and we have a you know, 21,000 uh, giga disk, so that's the 20 terabyte disk and that's the 
uh, two giga disk. Of course, we want to uh, place the DSS image on the two giga disk. So enter. Now it will be copying, uh, checking the source and uh, copying the image file onto two, two giga disk. Make it bootable and that's it. And our DSS is installed already. Okay, so I just now select reboot. Installation successful, right? So reboot. This process will be almost identical uh, on your real machine. So now you see there is a one single line and next boot menu is also one single line, 64 bit. There is no more installer option because this is installed already. So there is no reason to show the installer option. I'm booting now not from the ISO image, but I'm booting now directly from the uh, SSD disk because I was installing this uh, um, 2 giga volume on the SSD disk, right? And the DSS will uh, has attached this uh, 2 giga disk as a boot media and has attached 20 terabyte disk as a raw disk from the RAID, uh, made from the RAID array, uh, from LSI RAID array. Okay, system is booting now uh, under 86%. Actually, we start all the services uh, and the mounting the volumes. Uh, so it is uh, taking a bit longer. Uh, just to remind you, we can see that our DSS, when I right mouse click and go to Okay, so just to remind you that we have a, a two network adapter and two uh, hard disk, that's the boot disk and that's the uh, data disk. Okay, so uh, the, our machine is already up and running and of course I need uh, the, f the first thing I need to go to my machine when uh, it's uh, virtual or uh, physical. I need to set up my uh, IP address for my network. So the, my default in many cases is okay, but in, in our case today, I will not use the default IP addresses. So I will go to Control Alt N. So when I forget it, I just click F1 and I have the, uh, you know, all these uh, hotkeys explained. Here we have also change IP, press uh, Control left uh, plus N. So I'm doing Control alt N and I'm able to edit the IP address. So enter the IP address I need in my setup is uh, 246, 220, it's okay. Of course, I can set the gateway if I need to access internet, for example, uh, to get the time, 192.168.246.1. Okay, apply. And that uh, will be uh, the IP which I need for my uh, settings. And the second port, actually, I will not use it. So I can leave like this. But when I will not really use it, there are a few options. You can disable the port, you can uh, activate deactivate the port on the GUI, or you can set a different, uh, uh, you can set also the bonding and connect both uh, to your switch. Probably that will be the best idea. But I will not configure this port 
because probably I will have some problems uh, connecting to Active Directory with this, with using a server name. Uh, this is why I want to leave it. Then we will simula simulate some problems as well. Okay, so now uh, it, is in it is telling me that I need to create a volume group. Oh, okay, so I just need to go to my uh, Firefox. And that's my server. Okay, just enter. Understand the rings, add exception, confirm. Okay, and that's the first thing I need uh, to generate uh, my uh, number, the trial number. So I need to uh, get the product key and I need to enter my uh, email address. So let me enter my email address. And it will send a request to my... I will just... Okay, I will on my other my local I have a access to my okay I just click on this very big link and that's my product key so I will just copy the product key you will get it as easy as I was getting Okay, so just paste it, apply, and that's it. We got, we are in. So agree, full access, the password factory default is admin. Uh, that's the very first uh, setup. And of course, we can go through. I, if you want to exit and do everything manually, you can just cancel and select do not uh, show uh, this uh, mm, at the logon, right? So English is okay. Next, enter password. I will stay with admin. Okay, uh, here static IP, I will stay with this. Time zone, it is very important to have proper time zone because if it will be wrong, then you will have problem to connect to Active Directory. Okay, the use NTP, that's the best idea. Of course, you must have a DNS configured and a gateway. I'm not sure whether I was configuring DNS, probably not, then I will need to fix this problem. That's most probably the reason that I didn't enter the DNS. Okay, and it was not able to... DNS one nine two one six eight 
two, four, six, and one, four, four. That's my Active Directory server here in my network. Oh, I have some problem here with my network configuration, so by meantime I will select the manual. It is a demo network, so I'm not uh, really sure what they set up for me. Looks I have a problem with the... I will maybe cancel this because uh, it's second try, we are wasting time. So, first I go to setup and network interfaces. Let me see whether the DNS was updated. So it was updated by meantime, so I have a DNS. I have also gateway configured and this default gateway is selected good then probably i need to put a unique dss uh, the server name uh, the dss is a not good idea especially in our network when there is plenty dss so i just select dss demo uh, to make sure that i have a unique uh, server name in in my network The host name is, is kind of guarantee unique because uh, it's a random name. Okay, so here I need to refresh my screen. Okay, so uh, after configuring network uh, and uh, under setting that, making sure that the time is okay, so under uh, under hardware settings, I check one more time uh, whether I can install this NTP now. Continuous network. Okay, continuous adjusting NTP. Okay, just apply. I'm not sure whether my gateway is proper, but yeah, looks like my gateway is wrong configured. Okay, but I will not investigate it now. Uh, in your network you will know uh, your gateway settings uh, but in our case the time is still proper so I, I hope we will be able to connect to Active Directory without any problem uh, because uh, the problem is when you have a five minutes difference between Active Directory and your DNS and your DSS so the first option we ha have to go to volume groups okay volume groups um, and then we'll see our storage unit. So our 20 terabyte storage unit is available now. And we, c we can start to use it already. But before I start to use it, I will test whether the speed is okay. We have a very quick benchmark built in. So I, I will go to my console and uh, on Control alt w okay, go, admin, we have a benchmark. And I'm doing this because uh, when there is no volume group, I have a read and write test. When it, there is volume group, I have a read test only. Because this is a, a dest um, destructive uh, write test, okay? So we are just writing with DD. So read test, confirmed uh, with, N, uh, with space, so I select this. So on the read test, I'm getting 700, one more time. Okay, one more time. 
Okay, 994. Okay, almost 1000 megabytes per second. Looks the uh, the rate is installed properly. Let us see the write test. Okay, this is a destructive test. A 1.5 gig, you know, writing test uh, here works faster. Okay, we can repeat one more time. Write, select, and confirm. Okay, 1.4, that's also very good. Uh, value okay so our benchmark uh, is run performance is okay so we can already select the unit and apply so we will create the volume group after creating volume group we can create a very quickly a NAS volume we can create iSCSI volume and we can uh, check the connectivity Good, the volume group already exists, so let us click on it to select. And for very quick, I have a NAS volume. I need, uh, I need to select the capacity, let's say 2000 gigabytes, so 2 terabyte, apply. Okay, so NAS volume is there. Let us select also maybe iSCSI volume. So I select iSCSI volume, uh, I select block I.O. If I select file I.O., I can also test the writing speed here. You can do it, you can check how it works. Let's say you make file I.O. with initialize and the fast, just uh, 100 gig. So in this case, every percent will be uh, will be just uh, one gig so when we will see that the initializing so fulfilling uh, this hundred gig uh, empty file or sparse file with zeros then we'll see the progress so every one percent is equal to one giga so we see that this is really moving uh, so now it's al already uh, 20 giga uh, written uh, means the the speed of your uh, disk is looks okay optically we can see that the the disk is is able to uh, get the data quite fast okay we, we don't need to wait for the uh, 100 gig we can by meantime you can delete it Our goal will be uh, block I.O. disk, so let me uh, select iSCSI, default is a block I.O., that's okay. And I can just create a volume or I can also create the target automatically. So when I create the target automatically, let me put, let's say, 6,000, so that will be more than 2 giga, uh, um, than 2 terabytes, sorry, uh, then we'll see also how to use it under Windows. So apply. So I have a two terabyte NAS volume and six terabyte about uh, iSCSI volume block I.O. So iSCSI volume block I.O. We can select very quick, go to iSCSI initiator, okay, and uh, go to discovery, discover portal 192.168.246.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
the volume will be no more exported over this iSCSI target. So it is available for attach and I can attach. Before we were having plus and minus, now we have attach, detach. Okay, you see that the 6000 giga volume is attached here. It was done automatically, but I want to show you. So okay, now uh, we have uh, not connected, we can just connect. It is connected, so now we can go to uh, computer, manage, and in the data management, you, you see we have a disk ready. So when I selected MBR, then uh, the maximum, uh, the, f the first disk size, the first uh, boot disk is only, uh, the first disk is only two terabyte. If you want to have six terabyte disks, then we need to click here and convert to a GPT disk, then we can uh, format uh, six terabyte volume. Uh, I maybe show you that I can uh, connect, uh, convert back to MBR master boot record. Then I have two disk. When I convert to GPT, then I have one disk. And we can now quick format. Okay, then the six terabyte disk will be available for storing the data already. Okay, that's the disk D. When I go to computer, so that's my local disk. Maybe I can copy something. Okay. So it is copying the data to to my iSCSI disk. Okay. So that was iSCSI, and the second option is NAS. So we have a all NAS uh, disk created, so we can go to NAS shares and create already on this uh, volume a share. But uh, we have two options: just create a share and access this as a public share. So I just create a shared data, okay, and here I, I can choose on which uh, volume, but I have one volume to just confirm. So my shared data is already created. I'm not c connected to Active Directory yet, so I can enter the uh, users manually, uh, but also I can uh, make a public share, so I click on this share and select here guest uh, so without password apply okay now i can go to uh, browser and try to connect so that will be dss demo demo and data so as you see i able to, able to connect and i can already create some directory and create some data on it. There is another option. I can connect to Active Directory, so in the NAS settings. I can select Active Directory. I have already Active Directory on my uh, computer, so uh, that was uh, demo.local, that's my realm. Uh, IP address uh, is uh, 256144, uh, exactly the same as a DNS administrator. Uh, my password. And now I can try to connect. Are you sure? Uh, when there is no uh, DNS, then you get a prompt that uh, you are uh, requested to enter DNS, otherwise it will not able to connect to the Active Directory.
when I will connect to Active Directory, then I will uh, start NS lookup and DSS demo. You see these uh, address 256.220, it is already registered. Let us uh, wait until it is finished. Okay, now it is uh, registered and you see the NS lookup. When I go to NS uh, lookup tool, okay, and then enter DSS demo, uh, it, it is showing me both uh, IP addresses registered. Okay, and then uh, this sequence doesn't matter because it is uh, just round robin. Uh, so the, both are registered. And when we go to uh, DS, uh, DNS, so administrator tools and DNS, then uh, forward zone demo, okay, demo.local, then you see my uh, network card of my DSS is registered and the second unused is registered as well. This uh, may cost us problem connecting to the uh, share via the name. So we are connected. Let me demonstrate this. I go to shares and now my share, when I select this share, uh, I will be editing this share and you see I have a user. Th there is no many users, uh, just administrator and I'm uh, logging as administrator as well. I will just say not guest but users with password apply. So now it is no more public share. Now I need to add a username in order or group in order to access this, right? So now when, when I try to uh, access my data, I'm not able because uh, it is not configured yet. So I select administrator, apply. And, and now I can try to connect. Okay, it is still not. Let me try to enter my password. So it was uh, giving me access uh, to this, but it is not always the case. In some cases, you will be not able to answer uh, to maybe after rebooting my uh, DSS or maybe after rejoining to the domain. Uh, let me rejoin. Um, another workaround is you can instead of IP, instead of um, uh, name, you can enter also IP uh, 192.168.246.220. Now, you uh, access via IP, not via the name. And now we access via the name, okay? Uh, sorry, this is DSS, this is a different machine. Our machine is DSS uh, demo, okay? That's our machine, okay. Uh, DSS demo data, okay? Let me go to NAS and uh, Active Directory, I will rejoin, okay, so one minute. So we are rejoining. You can manually remove the uh, unwanted IP address from the DNS, but after rejoining, it will be back. So this is not permanent solution. As I mentioned, you can also uh, put the both cards and the make bonding on this and connect to the bond IP. 
if there will be no other uh, solution, you can also enter the alias IP uh, for uh, to the to the network adapter. And let me see whether it is maybe the case. Uh, when I go to the network adapter, open the change settings. Uh, this one is disabled. This one is in use. Okay, let me go to advanced and let us see. And you see, it is always working because I have also an IP address with 1444 and then it will go uh, over this uh, network card and it has access uh, in this uh, subnet. It will just go out. So I can remove it now so that I have act I have only my main IP and this is another network to access my IPMI server okay and now one more try I'm, tr I'm trying to access over the name it still works okay but in order to simulate this problem after removing this IP from the network card I will probably reconnect one more time it is very funny because uh, if you have such a uh, unused port on DSS the both ports uh, when I was showing to you in NS lookup are exported to to the Windows server and the Windows server may try to use uh, uh, this sum that one first and if this subnet is not defined on your network card then it will have problem and it will be not able to connect to the uh, DNS. It will be stuck on this and will not skip to use uh, another path. So when you will add the alias IP uh, with this same subnet here, uh, then uh, then it will connect it and uh, there will be no problem connecting to the uh, to the DSS over the NAS. Another workaround is just IP. Okay, I was connecting. Uh, let me see what is the. Okay, both addresses are there. Both addresses are out, uh, also in the DNS. And I will try. And now you see we have a pro problem. We have a problem we cannot access over DSS demo data. Okay, let us cancel this. And can we access via IP? Okay, one nine two one six eight uh, two four six and two hundred twenty. Okay, so IP works as you see, and DNS. Oh, now works again. But when I refresh, okay, it works. But I promise you, you you will uh, have such problem from time to time. So. And there is another workaround. We have a small update available on our FTP, which is able to control on which interfaces Samba, so the Windows share, will be exported. This will be added to the product as soon as possible, but if you need this uh, a small update, you can just go to our FTP server and you can download this uh, from our FTP server or just contact our support. Okay, so for today I'm uh, done. We are, uh, we have shown quite a lot as a quick start because we have also made some troubleshooting. We were able to show how to install as a virtual machine, how to update a SIG server, how to access public share or, uh, over Active Directory, 
and how to configure iSCSI target. That's, that's uh, I, I guess, all for today. If I don't see any questions, then I would like to uh, say thank you very much for your time and I would like to invite you for the next webinar. Uh, you can uh, look for the uh, for our next webinar on our website uh, and under about and news we will put some new dates here there are already some uh, our colleague in the US okay webinars next is the 7 of May you can join as well so thank you very much uh, for today and uh, hope to hear you soon bye